Welcome back to Small Caps. My name is Kerry Stevenson, and today I've got something really different, guys. This is something I don't think many of you will have heard of, leaf resources. Now, if you think you understand leaf resources, you don't know the half of it because I've been learning so much about this company, and I'm excited to share it with you today. Now, the ASX code is L-E-R. L-E-R is the ASX code. Joining me today is Ray Mumford. He is the managing director. You're going to learn stuff today that I didn't know, and it's going to be a really fun interview. So, Ray, good to see you. Yeah, now, you. you haven't spoken to our investor audience before, so why don't we first up just start with a brief overview of who are Leaf Resources, and it's it's a little bit different. It's pretty pretty interesting what you guys are doing. Yeah, well, for us, it's normal. Um, <laughs> but, but, we, but, yeah, Leaf, Leaf Resources is, is, a, uh, is a company, a group of people, a group of investors who are taking um, and extracting natural sustainable chemicals out of sustainably sourced, um, you know, carbon sources, in this case, pine, or, or more specifically, pine stumps. And, um, and sorry, to, sorry to interrupt you, Ray. You said naturally sourced chemicals. Aren't chemicals unnatural? You put those two together, and I'm thinking, aren't chemicals unnatural? Or is yeah, well, I think water's your most natural chemical, um, and then okay. you're standard. Then you've got your essential oils, which everyone knows about. Of course, pine trees are the biggest producer of essential oils in the world. So, you know, and that would be gums and and that sort of thing. So, yeah, there, there are natural chemicals. Uh, and, that, you know, and I think that's that's the key differentiator is that chemicals has been such an unsexy word because of the, um, the this, just the overpowering powering, um, element of petroleum sourcing and using all of those type of, um, petroleum uh, top chemical turner to make chemicals, synthetic chemicals, all of those things. But of course, we're we're all chemicals. We're made of chemicals. Our brain works from chemicals. We're listening to chemicals through, you know, all, all of all of that. I see I see a tree. This this is the key differentiator between us and, and what we have to do with forestry is that when I go into a forest, I don't see wood. I see the chemicals. <laughs> I see I see the lignin. I see the cellulose. I see the red rosin. I see the terpenes. Um, okay. And that, and you know, and I see that, you know, then I, you know, I, I pick up my drink label and I see the glue and, and that there, which is, you know, it can either be petroleum or sourced or it could be a natural gum. You know, okay. we go get a, could be a could be a petroleum sourced or a synthetic one or or horribly, you know, the old mercury or it could be a natural gum from a right. tree. And, and so, in term, I'm just curious, in terms of the balance at the moment. Uh, between natural and petroleum based, because petroleum based is the nasty stuff, I guess, is it? And well, I guess that's how we're, certainly how we're painting it. Um, but uh, the, but uh, you know, look, yeah, you know, your natural your natural stuff, obviously, um, it doesn't have to change things. It doesn't change in the environment. It doesn't connect and, and uh, make other nasty chemicals that we can't get out of our environment or out of our waterways and all of those sort of things. So that, there is a difference. And um, you know, and in our industry. Uh, and the size of our market that we're addressing, um, you know, which we're talking about, you know, briefly alluded to things like your compounds on your tyre and, you know, your rubber tear steel about your chewing gums, you drink it, you, you know, you drink emulsifiers and, you know, your Coca, you know, and your Coca-Cola and all that sort of stuff. You know, the, the size, you've basically got about, you know, a million tonnes of these pine sourced chemicals and you've got a bit over a million tonnes of these petroleum sourced ones. The, the, okay. the, the and the limit is the limit on the pine side has been the accessibility to sustainably grown pine. That's been the limit. And, and, and I say accessibility, I'm not talking just about being able to access those, those pine forests. Um, in other words, competing for that, say that same pine, as they said, is wood, keep competing for those chemicals with a, a sawmill or something. It's not quite like that. It's more around the... Um, the processes and the technologies and the way in which we access those chemicals. And that, that is really the issue that we have addressed in, in LEAF um, in this last while. Okay, so let's talk about how you've addressed that because you've got, I, I believe it's a patented technology or patent pending technology yes. to be able to source this, uh, these chemicals, as you call them. Uh, I'm learning yes. something, every, I love learning. Um, but it's an organic solvent process. Te- uh, is it just explain the process and why yeah. it's so yes, unique? Sir. So what what we've um, you know we've done two things now we obviously access the forest by learning how to work with the forest owners and, and looking at where they're um, not doing well 
in the sense of that, for instance, they get they they earn nothing from pine stump, which is twenty five percent of this mass of the tree. Oh, um, we, okay. So we've, you know, we've been able to um, show them with, and and come in as a customer to buy that twenty five percent and that. So that that's one part of the accessing, but and it's very important because in this type of industry, as I alluded, you've got a supply shortage, so it's supply driven. So then, secondly. Um, you know, accessing these chemicals through uh, our process, which is what we looked at was it had to be non-destructive. We didn't want to be at using either chemicals or physical uh, attritions and things that created an environment where those chemicals um, degrade. Because, you know, when you, when you add other chemicals and you make a reaction, the chemical changes and, and you can't, you never get 100%. It never, you know, never go, it, it's very difficult then for it to go back. So if we bring something outside, a synthetic additive, and you add it to a chemical, well, that's no longer a, a natural chemical, is it? It's now got it's now yeah. got this other appendage hanging on it. And so, so what we did was we said, well, let, what's the thing that moves the resin out of the tree? It's the natural terpenes. It's the essential oil of the pine. That's its fo- its function in the tree. So we took that essential oil, and we used that to wash the rest of the wood. And what it did was it washed the free resin out of the out of the pine trees. And that, and that was how we developed the process, and we've been able, and we're the first people to do that, and we've been able to patent, um, you know, we've got patent pending on that process, patent pending on the product, because of course we haven't. Every other producer of these chemicals use other chemicals in their process. Whether even if they're tapping the tree like a like a rubber tap, tree tapping, they add acids, they add gr- um, plant growth hormones. These, these are chemicals that are not good in our um, in our food chains. They're not good in our waterways. They're not. And uh, and those um, those come through in trace elements, and we all know, you know, we've all heard the word sensitization. We all know about, you know, getting sick from lactose intolerance with milk, and that's my background. I, I grew up on that stuff, um, being a dairy technologist. But the so I was just about to say, are you a chemical engineer or are you a what's your background? <laughs> um, I'm a. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur. <laughs> I don't know what I am. How did it's, you, you know, you've, you've you know, come up with I this? I grew up in, yeah, yeah, I, I, I've got that mixture of growing up on a farm that was the first farm forestry project in New Zealand and, um, you know, we and been, you know, forest around us um, and been engaged in forestry. I, my first tour through a pulp mill, a chemical pulping mill, what I'm talking about was when I was 12 years old. Um, that was part of our schooling. So yeah. there, there's... There's a, a, you know, that there and then the other side was the farming, was the dairy farming. And so uh, I, I applied to study forestry at the University of Canterbury. I was refused. And so I joined the dairy industry. Okay. <laughs> um, I applied a year before I wanted to leave, you know, I, wanted, I didn't want to do the final year of school. But um, <laughs> and so I did a diploma in dairy technology. And that's my only, uh, my only um, higher education. Um, but, but I guess you've got a you, you had a keen interest in in process and I'm how good at chemistry work. and I'm good at process and yeah. that and uh, you know um, and there's many in Fonterra that would attest to that today. Um, so so you know as and, and I think that's you know one of the strengths of us as a company what we've done is is I've been able to pull people like me around. Um, you know I've got I've pulled I've got you know Grant who's come from the the oil fields up in the Permian Basin in Texas. We've got you know, we've got, I think, 12 chemical engineers from all over this Australia, but representing nine different countries of birth. Um, we, You know, these are people that are just so passionate about doing what we're doing, knowing that we're doing something that's that's actually not just changing the, the, the business world, but it's actually changing our environment. Because, okay, you and, know, and, Ray, no one else is doing So basically what you've got is you're taking... Uh, the pine tree, which used yep. to be this taken down, and people would still use the resins and the likes, yes. but they would add um, synthetic chemicals to it, not good for the environment. What you're doing yep. is yep. saying, listen, we don't need anything synthetic. We're going to make this all organic and natural. And yep. no one else is doing that. Yep. No one else is doing that. And, and no, and you know, really uh, very few companies are engaged, are, have been able to engage with the forest owner as well in this way. To bring this step change, to, to basically um, start industrialising this type of uh, um, you know supply source of this type of chemicals, because the the chemical pulping process industrialised it, but that was invented back in the you know the, the late 1900s, early 1900s. So there's no thought to whether it was destructive or, or um, the waste, the amount of waste streams. For instance, they 
you know, they can they end up only achieving a 50% yield of the available chemicals through their process versus us, you know, we're at 99. <laughs> so, oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, so, so 50% versus 99%. And you said before that 25% of the tree is in the stump. Uh, my vision was a stump's a stump, like there's nothing. Yeah, but you've got to hold the tree up. And, and you know, if you've got 75% above ground and it's all in the wind and swaying around, it's, it's it, it, you know, it needs to have some mass there holding it up. So you've got the roots. It's actually 35%. I, I cut it back to 25 because I'm, I'm eliminating all the logs, little side roots because we don't use them. Um, right. and we, want to leave that, we want to leave those in the soil to help with the soil structure. But taking that bowl out, that bit, but the key thing that I talked about there, and you can think of this being a, an inverted tree is, and that swaying bit, is that that's why there's so much resin in the stump because its function is to provide the, the resin makes the tree flexible. So that's what's one of the great attributes of, of the the wood, you know, of lignin is that when you coat it with resin, it becomes flexible, it doesn't break and snap, it's incredibly strong. And of course, it's a C24 carbon. And then that, so now we just sort of move into understanding just how close it is to these other C24s and these other medium range carbons, chains, chemicals that we use every day in every application with it. I mean, look, what's your asphalt going on the road if it's not a bunch of chemicals with stones in it? You know, what, what you, okay, what's so it? So yeah. what, I, what I want to get into, though, now is you've, because it's fascinating, and I didn't realise, like, 35% is below ground and that that was just being wasted before. Yeah. So Leaf Resources are saying, no, 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 we don't need to waste any of it. We'll take all of it and we'll actually use all of it in a sustainable way, which is awesome. But yeah. let's talk about the products that you're developing because that's yeah. pretty interesting. Yeah, well, you know, so we, we take out, obviously, rosin, and, and these, t- what we call them, terpenes, and, and the rosin being the glue, the, 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 the gooey yellow part of it, which is, you know, what rosin is, is it's unfossilized amber. <laughs> you know, amber is, is pine gum that's been fossilized, you know, being old pine gum. So, uh, yeah, we can make it look nice like that. Um, but the, um, uh, we t- we, and this, this gum has is, is got a massive, you know, use every day we, we use it, we need it, whether you're waxing your legs, whether you're putting fillings in your mouth or chewing chewing gum with those fillings in your mouth um, or uh, <laughs> drinking Coca-Cola at the same time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's why you got the things yeah. in, that's why you got the uh, things in your mouth because you're yeah, too much exactly. Coca-Cola. It's all, it's all useful for us. <laughs> but you're, um, you know, and then, then we talk about the flavouring in those drinks and, of course, a lot of the flavouring is actually... Um, is actually uh, hybrids of the pine essential oil. So we take the pine oil and we can, the, the, what's amazing about, about the essential oil and the pine is that the two main ingredients in it are the, are the building blocks for all fruit sugars that are in all other plants. So, so plants are made up pretty much of the same chemicals. It's just the ratios are different. And so even grass has, has these oils in them. But, you know, and you, the smell of cut grass, that smell is the, is, is the essential oil of the grass. You know, and that, and so in the pine, we have this these building blocks, these base, and there, and there's an abundance of them. And in the stumps, there's a, as I was saying, because it gives that flex, that's where it makes and and actually synthesizes these chemicals are naturally made down in the stump. And the, the tree sucks the uh, you know sucks breathes the tree breathes in a carbon loaded atmosphere and breathes out pure oxygen, and it takes the carbon, it sequesters that- it. And builds and builds the tree up, and we're we're just accessing those carbon molecules that have been rearranged by the tree into these chemicals, and, and that we use as part of our everyday life. Yeah. Okay, so so you've got natural uh, uh, turpentine, natural rosin, rosin, yes. Um, um, you've got high purity sugars and also co-products as well. Yes, so so at the back end, so. We, and at this point in time, what we've done is we've commercialised and our, our business plan right now is about commercialising the rosin and the terpenes extraction. And we've got a plant up at Apple Tree Creek that, uh, that has uh, got an 8,000 tonne a year capacity and, um, and there'll be news coming out shortly about increasing that and, and growing the company. But we've got markets to sell um, all of the terpenes. We've You've got a five-year contract on those, and um, in order to meet that market, we need to double that capacity to sixteen thousand ton. And um, then at the back end of the plant, we the the wood that we we chip the wood up into about fingernail size, and um, and that's how we we open it up for extraction. And the back end of the plant, that 
at the lower throughputs, um, up to 8,000 tonnes, we've been uh, we've been supplying um, all the ginger farmers and the, the, the chook growers, the egg growers, and that with their, um, you know, with their mulches and that sort of thing. Um, but at the back end there, we're, we're about to announce, um, you know, uh, wood fuel going in, um, wood pellet fuel, um, because that's a 25 billion, uh, 25 million ton a year market, um, which is replaces coal as a as a fuel for um, mostly power stations and um, home heating um, in colder climates. So that's all export. And then on the on the other on the other chemical side of that, Leaf Resources own um, further patents and technology on a glycel process, which is another organic chemical that breaks and separates the cellulose off the lignin. So it further breaks the wood down. And that that process will be, the cellulose obviously the complex sugars and um, we're looking at, um, you know, moving those into further adding like high octane um, alcohols used for fuels. And of course your uh, lignans um, as bioplastics and, and that later on. So those, those elements will start to, you know, there's still, um, there's still some work to be done, not a lot, um, but the main work that needs to be done in the company to ensure that we can really scale up is to build that base of capability amongst our staff as a company, that performance amongst our, as a company, so that we've got a really solid launching um, pad of, as I talked about, those, those engineers and uh, um, you know, staff and capability and the processing plant cash flows, all of that, so that we can actually go in and, you know, to places like um, New Zealand's Kaingaroa Forest with 1.5 million hectares of pine and, you know, yeah, put well, in 20,000. Sorry 20, to stop you because we, we're going to run out of time if I don't because I love the fact that you've got so much knowledge. And, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know about you, but I'm learning so much. Who knew? Who knew? I need to know the following things. First of all, what's your supply? Like you talked about uh, the forestry farmers before. Um, do you have enough supply or in the future is that going to be challenging? And is all your supply coming from Australia or are you looking globally? Okay, so um, I'll answer it backwards. We're looking globally, of course. Um, you know, pine is sustainably grown and, and that's the main wood product, softwood in particular, that's sustainably grown around the world. Um, and why, why are we, you know, why are we finding it um, relatively easy to access that supply? Obviously, is because A, our products are high value, so we can afford we can afford to buy. Um, we we are in a position where for resinous logs we can even afford to buy those logs um, competing with sawmills. Um, okay. Or uh, and then obviously the stumps, it's the same thing. It ends up being about the same about amount of cost when you got to get the stump out of the ground. You got to clean it up. You got to get the you know, site and all of that. But of course, by opening up a new supply option and uh, and uh, being the not just the first mover. But, the, but given that it's quite a complex uh, operation and being able to uh, get forestry companies to actually, you know, um, change the way in which they manage their forests uh, to start supplying from stumps, you know, has been a major um, achievement of ours. And so, you know, yes, supply is, um, you know, we're, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a job to, to um, access it like anything, but... Um, no, I don't see there being issues on supply because we're adding value to the forests that they otherwise didn't have. We're, we're the best thing has ever happened and they can afford, you know, they so can you're afford. Pay, you're, you, you, I guess you're paying more than a sawmill would, I guess. Would that be right? Because you're actually using that 25% that was left behind before. Well, the sawmill doesn't want the stump. No, <laughs> they that's They can't right. use it. The stump's, yeah. the stump's grain goes all sorts of ways and it's not even, it's no good for even a, um, even a, a paper plant. Right. You know, they, okay. That, that's what's uh, that's what's so good about it, and and of course the high chemical content is, and even in a resinous log, that's your sawmill doesn't want that. You know, so you buy a four by two, you don't want the thing leaking resin, and everyone's seen those four by twos with the knot on it leaking the resin that pushes the paint off it and yeah. whatnot. You know, so yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'm I'm curious. You're based in Queensland. Is uh, the the plant up in Queensland as well, and is all of the focus at the moment? I know you said you're sourcing globally, but right now is your supply just coming from Queensland? Okay, for that plant, the the supply is localized. Obviously, you know you don't want to be well. Some there is a company that's shipping the stuff in, but that's not in Australia. Um, but the uh, but you want to be sourcing as local as you can to the forest, and for us, that's sort of a a 100 to to 150 kilometer radius. 
And so when we talk about growing the company, that's about, you know, putting in alternative sites. And, and I, I want to sort of talk to that a little bit because our environmental discharge compared to any other manufacturing unit, you know, we discharge water that's, that's um, because they only additive into our process is steam, which drives the process and that condenses back to water. And we currently, um, you know, we've been growing ginger in it. <laughs> so so um, it fertigates well um, because what's in it is a bit of wood flour. You know, and that we don't have, because we haven't added any other chemicals, then of course you don't have to worry about taking them out. And you certainly don't have to worry about discharging them into the environment. So, uh, you know, so accessing um, sites and sort and that, because in this um, day and age where, where environmental impacts is, is incredibly important to everybody. Um, and that, and that, that is the thing that we have to overcome is that we still need to put in green manufacturing. And so we, you've still got to go through those processes and you've still got to um, be able to achieve those positive outcomes of get access to those sites and then obviously the supply source from the forest. So, yeah, we're, we're talking, um, you know, uh, to every other state um, bar one in Australia um, and, uh, and certainly in New Zealand. Why bar one, am I allowed to ask? Oh, well, you, you, make, you make decisions based on the readiness of the supplier to um, perform as well. Okay. Capabilities to perform how, as well. How easily scalable is it? Because you talk location, that the, the forest has got to be pretty close. Is this going to be easy to scale for you in terms of the process and the manufacturing? Two, two things about the process um, is that we've built it um, We've we've built it in such a way, and, and it's it's around about it's it's about um, you know return on investment is, is, is everything, and so we designed this these factories so that they can be mod they're modular, and uh, so it's basically this eight thousand ton module which um, you know can generate um, you know between twenty and thirty um, million each each one and about ten mil put in per annum each time per annum. So, so so there's you know there, there's there's an indication. Um, and I'll say, you know, it's quite a range, but that, that depends on things like yield, stumps, where, location, how far, costs, all of those elements. Um, and, uh, you know, but if you spend 10 and got 10 back per annum, that's still a hell of a return, isn't it? Absolutely, so, yep. So, so we're, um, and, and as far as being able to, um, you know, scale it, uh, and that obviously, you, again, we you look at the size of the market, an average sized contract for us to sell to into a customer is 5,000 tonne a year in, in the Rosin side. Well, right. we've only got 5,000 tonne a year, basically just over that um, on this one little plant. So, okay. and it's not, it's not good business to have one customer. No, not good business. But you've got this plant. So, so, so let's so, talk revenues because you've got the plant. <coughs> Excuse me, the process is working. Uh, yes. What's your revenues like? What's your forecast? So, so we. We have just commissioned just commissioned the plant. We've got first um, uh, first uh, sales samples have gone to our customer. We've contracted all of it. That's the terpene side, and that's fully contracted. Um, they have um, tested that sample, and we're just putting the pricing. So next week, first sales of chemicals wood oh, sales are okay. out. Um, we turned dirt last June, and so in the in the during COVID during this time, we have gone from being a private company uh, with me, myself, and my dog. No, but basically <laughs> seven guys. Um, and uh, and, and um, gone, you know, yeah, um, brought Queens, that was at Queensland um, Essential Oils. Um, and we have uh, taken over, um, you know, come into um, Leaf Resources, gone public, and um, which was to access capital and to utilise their technologies right. and bring their skills on board. Um, developed our management team, developed our board, developed our staffing team, got the capital together to, to build the plant, install, build it, um, and uh, commissioned over this last three months. And uh, so uh, it's, um, yeah, it's been a hell of a ride. I, I had, a, I had, I actually had dreadlocks. <laughs> Love it. <Yeah. laughs> yeah, been a bit of a ride. Well, I, and, and you know, excuse the pun. You're not letting the grass grow under your feet, are you? Because no, you're no, just, we, you know, we're going hard, and, and we really are. And um, we've been fortunate that you know, because I've been, I've been in this industry twenty years. I work for people that we're supplying. You know, oh, I used to. So you know them. You've got the relationships. Yeah, yeah. and uh, you know, and and they're incredibly supportive. And that, and and we've been able to grab some of you know some key people. I've had, I've got a guy with me that's been with me fifteen years, 
but it took me two years to get them in the country. I got them in two weeks ago. Wow. Was, but, you know, because of COVID. Yeah. This We're running crazy. out of time, uh, Ray, so I really, really want to just very quickly um, find out, look, first of all, have you got government support? Because this is going to be, is this a carbon neutral or, or even better than that company? Oh, my opinion, it's better than that. Yeah. Um, we, need, we need to do some work to be able to verify that. But, uh, you know, we make the claim that, you know, and I can say that emphatically for every kilo of rosin we make, that's a kilo of, of oil that's not pumped because wow. it's a replacement, it's a direct replacement. Um, but, you know, you talk about the terpenes and you talk about the, then you start talking about the wood pellets on fuel and you start talking about the cellulose and the fuels and things like that. But yeah, do we have governmental support? We have great local support up in Bundaberg from our, our regional council there. Um, we have people in Queensland uh, government, I guess, uh, trying to help us, but we have not had any, um, we have not had any dollar for dollar or any of those grants. And and it's the interesting thing because we're the only buyer. I've been told by Queensland. I'm amazed. We're the only we're the only buyer economy project that's got up, and they've spent hundreds of millions. So, yeah. It, it, All right. It, shout out to the Australian government. Why aren't you supporting <laughs> this company? Sounds like it's going places fast. Uh, so instead of supporting ones that go nowhere, what about reach out, talk to Ray? He's clearly doing something right. You know, because that's because we're getting on and doing it. Yeah. And we're not we're not actually. And, and, you know, when you look at those grants and stuff like that, and we have applied and we have put some a lot of time and energy into them, but when you, you know, I'm not, we're out in the region actually doing it. And and that and the people I really need to talk to are the forest owners and, you know, and our customers and the engineers and our staff and all of that, you know, and, um, and that what I would like to see from the government is that they start actually helping new companies with compliance, particularly health and safety, design, all of those things where they've got so many laws that we're suddenly expected to be able to com to actually comply with on the day we open our doors. And that and that's an incredible barrier to putting up manufacturing in any country, but particularly here in Australia. And, and so the politicians say, hey, we need to do manufacturing. Okay, well, let's be practical about that because I know what it takes. And that and we and we are a compliant company. We've had work safe through us. We, you know, we we we're, we're doing the arts. Right. But we, that you need, you know, you don't know what you don't know. And when I have talked to politicians about it, they say, oh, well, that's what the regional developer guy's for. And that, no, it's not what they're for. You know, what this takes is it takes internal capability within each company and it takes money and it takes time. So, uh, Ray Mountford for Prime Minister, that's what I say. <laughs> <laughs> Ray, I want to, I, we, we've run out of time. Investors are listening. Why is now, I mean, it's, you've, you've clearly done a ton of work. I certainly didn't know about Leaf Resources until we started chatting. I found it fascinating. It's clearly, as we said before, zero carbon or even better than that. Uh, why do you think now is a good time for investors to put their hard-earned cash with Leaf Resources? Because we're not just at go, we've finally got onto Witch Apple. <laughs> we're, you know, in other words, we've we've got a functioning plant there. We've got sales happening. Um, so, you know, the eight thousand um, ton plant will be hitting that that run rate in the next periods, and uh, then from there we we'll be doubling, tripling, and quadrupling the size of the company as we talked about in that modular um, design element. And the beauty of those is that uh, because they are modular and because of the sizing, these are these are not so expensive to put them uh, where they need to be put. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, so, um, you know, so we're, we're a company that not just, and if you're a long-term investor, which is the best type of investor from my point of view, just quietly, yep. um, the next five to 10 years, um, watch out because all we're doing is building a platform for that, for that other chemistry that I talked about down the back end. And, that, and the reason why is that, the chemistry up the front end, which is just removing the rosin. We talked about how it lines the, the, the lignin and stuff. Well, it's also the thing that stops you being able to do further processing to it. So all these other processes where they've been struggling to pull stuff out, well, you needed to do our, our fancy process up the front. Um, will, you, will you license that process at all down the track or are you keeping it close to your chest? The, the extraction part of the plant at, at the front end, um, we're looking to keep close to our chest. The stuff at the back, we talk, those are sort of uh, 150 million plus projects, those ones at the back end. Um, okay. Uh, and, uh, you know, 
you know, for instance, yeah, they, they, they and the impacts and the, the volumes that we're talking about um, will be very, very significant. So uh, licensing and partnering, and we already have some of those in play um, and uh, and we, we will need to keep developing those. Yeah, you can't, you've got to choose what your core is. And then, you know, uh, I think that we will be a great company to manage and, and oversee the install because I've built an operational base and I've built a projects base in the company. And, um, and that is how we've structured it. Um, and I think that's really important um, when you go into partnerships with other, you know, with these, with these other, you know, institutions and, and companies. Sure. Um, but yeah, we, we are talking to, I can, you know, we are talking to some of the biggest companies in the world right now. They're approaching us because they know of what's Of course, going. yeah. Well, leading, I, I'd say leading the way in green technology and, you know, uh, getting, getting the job done is Ray Mountford, who's the managing director of Leaf Resources. Who knew? I didn't know half the things about the the good old pine tree. So next time you see a pine tree, ladies and gentlemen, you'll look at it in a different light, won't you? Go hug a pine. What's that? What's go that? hug a pine. Go hug a pine. Yeah, there we go. Go hug a pine tree. Hug a pine tree. And this is not financial advice, so you've got to go do your own research. But Ray Malford, absolute pleasure to talk to you. You're going to have plenty of news coming up, so I'm sure we'll yes. be talking again in, yeah. in a couple of months because you've got a lot of news flow coming out. So watch this on uh, Small Caps. We'll be covering all the news going forward. Ray Mountford from Leaf Resources, ASX Code LER. Thanks for joining us on Small Caps today. Thanks, Kerry. Pleasure.